The alien parking problem. Far into the future, Ms. Devlin's grade 12 physics class of the year 2098 preparing a special relativity demonstration. Due to advances in technology, everyone has prolonged lifetimes and always remains young and healthy. The students have been working together for the past few months on a class science fair project to construct a large space hangar. Their guests, aliens, are preparing to land their spaceship in the hangar, but the aliens and earthlings aren't sure that it will fit. They can't radio dimensions to each other because the aliens and earthlings use different units. However, the earthlings have many synchronized detectors on the ground, and they make recordings as the alien ship makes a few flybys. One detector detects the nose, and five nanoseconds later, another detector that is 900 meters away also detects it. How fast is it moving? What fraction of C is this? What is gamma at this speed? The class wonders. Well, velocity is distance over time, or 900 meters over 5 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds, which is approximately 1.80 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, or 3 or 5 C. Using the gamma equation, we can also find that gamma is 1.25. One detector detected the nose at exactly the same time that a second detector that was 240 meters away detected the tail. How long is the ship in the Earth's frame in nanoseconds? Well, time is distance over speed. 240 meters over C is 800 nanoseconds. Therefore, the ship is 800 nanoseconds long. With these calculations, the students measured the length of the hangar. Turns out, the hangar is exactly 800 nanoseconds long. Then the aliens check the length of the hangar. The radio of the class saying that the hangar is much too small. The class wonders how big the aliens think the hangar is. Why do they see it differently? With our previous calculations, we know that gamma is 1.25. 800 nanoseconds divided by gamma is 640 nanoseconds. Therefore, the aliens see the hangar as 640 nanoseconds long. This is because the aliens are traveling at such high speeds, they see it contracted. The students wonder how big the aliens think their ship is. We can do this similarly by taking 800 nanoseconds and multiplying it by gamma, which is 1.25. And we find out that the aliens think that their ship is 1,000 nanoseconds long. The aliens in the class seem to have some strong disagreements. The aliens decide to fly right through the hangar to see what will happen. The students are feeling pretty good when the detectors say that the ship's nose is at the exit when the tail is at the entrance. So much for superior alien intelligence. Still, the aliens insist that did not fit inside the hangar. Let's check with the space-time diagram. From the diagram, we see that the nose and tail are just within the hangar at t is equal to zero, according to the class. But when looking at the alien's moving frame, t prime, it appears that the ship's nose was already 400 nanoseconds out of the hangar by the time T prime is zero. They check the times. The class says that it took 2,600 nanoseconds to pass through, yet the aliens say 2,200 nanoseconds. It seems they're both still not understanding each other. So, the aliens will fly the ship in with the far doors closed. Let's see what will happen. So, who's to blame for this disaster? Well, now that the ship is at rest, both of them see that the ship is in fact 1,000 nanoseconds long, and the hangar is 800 nanoseconds long. 
So once again, the Earthlings appear to have been bested. The demonstration has taught Ms. Devlin's class a lot, particularly in some continuity, as both still disagreed about the times when the nose and tail entered or left. This is because some continuity is in fact relative, not absolute. Well, now the class and aliens can maybe take a break and have lunch. Next physics unit, how to rebuild alien spaceships. Thanks for watching. No aliens were harmed in the making of this video.